But I have this like paper here. It's still kind of thick, but mm -hmm. it's not as thick as that other one. So I was thinking maybe it would work. You know what might but, work? Origami paper. I, I wonder if that would. I think that would be too much. Like, well, no, it's you a think that'd be too thicker. thin. It's a little bit thicker than crepe paper. Yeah, it might be too thin. I guess it depends. I don't know. I'm just well. It, you know what? We'll just try. I don't have any, or I'd try it. But that was the best I got with that really thin. And I think what I found is when it's double, like you just showed yours where it had two designs, one on one side and one on the other, those tended to be really thick. Oh, yeah. Like hey, this. Hey, Miss Gigi. Yeah. yeah. This one is solid on the other side. Mm. Hello, Gigi. But, but these other ones, I do have a lot of these. These are kind of thick, but they're not as thick. And they're just kind okay. of pre-made. But I don't know. I, I think they're too long for what we're doing. Can you cut them in half? Can you cut them in half? Yeah. I can cut them. That wouldn't be a problem cutting them. And I even have my paper scissors and my paper slicer. <laughs> Excellent. That I just did the, so one of the things I watched, it said, you know, mark your top, and mark the bottom, and then you can use your straight ruler. And yeah. so that's kind of what I did. And then I picked up another interesting little tip when I was doing it. So I was just marking it off. You're already ahead of me since yours are already cut from the kit. So Pam has a kit that she got. And so that's yeah, what we're, we're going to play with the kit. And I'm making it up as I go. <laughs> yeah, I got it from a um, thrift store. Yeah. Oh, oh. So just before, I just want to show you something I found downstairs. It's just this right here. And if you can see this. Yeah. I but my mom, it. when I was a little girl, my mom made me a miniature dollhouse out of boxes, beads, scrap fabrics, and different things. And this was the bedroom. I can only find, that's a cardboard box. You can see right at the bottom, you can see the, the next floor. This was at the top floor. This was the living room uh -huh. down here. I got to try to find them. But she just made those long before. I just my mom was just genius before her time. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I see people doing things and I'm like, what? I found that looking for something else. I thought that was kind of fun. Okay. Hi, Janet. Hello, Janet. <laughs> Jinx. Okay, so what it said was mark your top. So I took, I'll take these down. So I'm gonna do this pink one. So I can get caught up with the beads on you on you and then so i took the top and i marked all my inch segments let's see boop 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 and then i did the same thing at the bottom and then i just lined them up and drew my lines yeah now i'm gonna cut that i'm gonna like cut up this sheet of paper and see if it works okay Fingers crossed. Yeah. If it doesn't, you know, it's worth the experiment. Yeah. Because it's just part of one of those, like, um, cover pieces that they use for when you're buying the packet. So it shows you the different um, designs that could be in the packet. Okay, now I'm going to try. I don't know where my paper trimmer is, so I am um, 
I'm gonna have, I'm trying having to be a little bit resourceful here. Well, that looks like a paper trimmer to me. Yeah, but I like the, you know. Oh, the guillotine? Yeah. Chop with their heads. <laughs> Hi, Janet Burgess. How are you? Hey, Janet. Okay. So I announced it on my community tab, too, so people would That's see nice. it. I put the link on there. Sweet. Oh, and I think I've got to figure out how to pin the link, but I'll put it in there because if anybody wants to join us, grab your camera and hop up. <laughs> yeah, the more the merrier. We're all good. Exactly. Yes. yes, it's my little dollhouse. That's so cool. I didn't even play with dolls, but um, I did like my little thing. I like little things. Were you, did, were you a doll? Did you play with dolls and stuff, Pam? Yeah, I have Barbie dolls. Okay. I still have Barbie dolls. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a collector? Um, I'm not a collector, no. No, you just... I, I just have my childhood Barbie dolls. Oh, that's rad. Because I was, just wasn't going to get rid of them. Right. I lost too much stuff growing up, um, having to move everywhere. Right. So, I'm kind of a hoarder. Right. And I tend to hold on to my stuff and not get rid of it. Well, you're in good company. <laughs> Well, thank you, Janet. I love my overalls, too. <laughs> <laughs> Dungarees. Oh, yes. I never read the owl paper. Oh, the owl paper is so cute. Like, I even have this as owls. <laughs> and it has foxes. Cute. I think that was... There should be one that has mushrooms on it, but I'm not seeing it. I just finished making a bunch of mushroom, um, like, well, there would be like a coaster, but everybody gave, I made them for friends and everybody gave them to us, hung them on the wall. <laughs> uh, every time I make them something like I made them some, some trivets for their, they have them hung on the wall. Oh, they're so cute. They won't use them. But yeah, I like the little mushrooms. Those were fun to play with. Just getting my paper back out. I'm going to look in it and see if there was actually mushrooms on it. Mm -hmm. But it shows in the collection kit that there's supposed to be mushrooms. Right. In the kit. But I have no idea. I didn't go through it enough because it's really thick. Well, it, it's Was as it thick as this or one. did you open it? Was it brand new when you got it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, rad. I love when that happens. Because I got it from Keisha's cell. Oh, that's okay. You got that one there. Okay, cool. Okay. So this one has mushrooms on that strip right there. Ah. I was oh, that's hoping it would be a though. whole I was hoping it would be a whole sheet so I could cut mushroom down this way. Right. And then I could have like the mushroom picture just showing on the top of the bead. Well, can you but, not just cut it out and like fussy cut it out and just glue it on the bead? Yeah, I can fussy cut it. I just learned that technique, so I'm using it. Am I using it properly? Fussy cutting. <laughs> yeah. I love the little terms everybody has. I feel like I've learned to, but I already knew these things. It's not like I didn't know. I didn't know how to do it. I just did. I had other I mean, names I'd made up myself for stuff. Okay. So I did some big triangles and some thin triangles. That way I could try different 
And then I did some to do like a cone because I thought the cones were kind of cool looking. So I'm going to separate these. That's a coney one. That would be two. These are triangles. Maybe. Okay. There we go. All right. I'm going to take my rotary cutter. Like I kept out my exacto knife too, but I'd rather use a rotary cutter. And this one I use strictly for um, paper. <laughs> so when I go to cut out my patterns and I need to cut my patterns because I don't want to always use scissors to cut them, I use my rotary cutter and cut them. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Well, I probably messed up on that one. Well, the one thing have... about these, it doesn't really matter. They don't have to be perfect. Do you, do you remember the back in the 80s when they had the like teen bot magazines and these kind of Lisa Frank? Well, they had the teen bot, but next to them were the crafty magazines like Teen Bop or Ranger Rick. That was another one I liked. But do you remember any of the cra kids crafty magazines they used to have? Yeah. That's where I'd learn these things. I'd read it in a magazine. I'd go, oh, I want to make that. We didn't have TikTok or YouTube. No, we didn't. <laughs> ah. This so it's great entertainment place. now because you can just turn it on and watch whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the girl said, I push it up to the edge and then she would tap it on the table as she was rolling it and she'd get this really nice straight edge on the one end, but I don't know if that's going to work so much for me at the moment. Hi, Suzanne. Hey, Suzanne. <laughs> you can make some beads with us. Okay. We really don't know what we're doing. We're just practicing. Right. Because <laughs> I did not make these ones. <laughs> these ones were already pre-made. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess I probably need a glue stick, huh? Ah! I lost my lid for my You're glue stick. You're smart. You yeah. have paper out on your table to catch all your stuff. That's my... I probably could have done that. I like, uh, yeah, paper bags from the stores. Some still have them. Yeah. I have a cardboard that I had on my table. I'll just use that. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. Let's see, is my head, I don't want my head getting in front of the camera. That's gonna annoy me. <laughs> I'm so blind. I uh, Gigi, I've doing. never made paper beads, ever. It, it was just pure coincidence that this paper bead kit was in a bag of thrift stuff I was getting. Because I was getting the bag for the other stuff. And the paper beads were just there. <clears throat> So I figured, why not? Then they started talking it in best group the other day. And I'm like, oh, I have a paper bead kit. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Just 
Is it? There you go. Turn that into a vase. <laughs> That's so pretty. Well, that was easy enough. Okay, I can do another one. I need to find my glue stick lid, though, that just fell on the floor. <laughs> We're going to have, like, you know, one of those all dried up and withered glue sticks. Oh, I've had plenty of those. It's been in the desert. <laughs> Woo! Hey, Becca. Yes, that's what we're doing. We're making them. Oh, I didn't even see Becca. Hi, Becca. Come join us. Okay, so I'm going to set that one. Somebody was saying, now, I do have some Mod Podge. But I'm going to wait, I think, and do all of those at the same time. So just make a bunch. But she yeah. used, um, hmm? I have some Mod Podge too. That's what I've we'll never used it, it, but I have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this will be a good time. Well, um, I bought it when I was getting my daughter Mod Podge because she was painting rocks at the mm -hmm. time. And so I picked up some Mod Podge because she was painting rocks and she would use it on the painted rocks to seal in the paint yeah. and stuff. Excellent. You know, I go off on my long-winded stories of why I picked a book up because it reminds me of my friend um, when my daughter went to preschool. And mm -hmm. it, and then I don't even, like, get into the real point of why I told that story. <laughs> because, <laughs> because we would go out and she would find rocks on the ground and she would pick them up, right. you know. And she was like, oh, this looks like a strawberry. Oh, this looks like a grumpy man's face. You know, all these different things. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then you would catch, she would want to bring them home because they'd remind. How smart is that? They'd make her think of something. Yeah. Well, and she'd paint them. So she did rock painting and stuff. How old was she? My friend. No, you, the, your daughter that painted My the rocks. My daughter. Oh, yeah. she did rocks too. So she's 20 now. Um, she'll still paint rocks sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's been a couple years since she's really gotten into painting rocks. So. Hello. Uh. Hang on just a second. Uh. Give me a second. Well, that's not too bad. Go ahead. Hey, Suzanne Cole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is making you beds? Yeah. Hi, Becky. Or in that place, is it? Yeah, whatever. Whatever. And that's paper. Uh huh. And then we'll put like a, a you know, a sealant on it. Around it, spray it. Or? Yeah, it'll be like glue, uh -huh. and then it dries. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you need me to only read gossiping? Again? That's what's going on. We right? are we're not sure. gossiping. Yes, we're we're telling gossiping. stories. Well, stories. <laughs> well, I'm not doing so good. May maybe I'm <laughs> gossiping about my daughter. I don't know. <laughs> really not doing very good at this for today. This is not. I need to practice a lot more. Something well, I've never on. done this at all. So <laughs> you're way ahead of me. I, I've never ever made beads before. Well, this will be my first time in a very so who, long who's time. Idea was this? That was everybody's idea. We it's I a, thought it was something that just put all the masters at. Nah. Here from someone. 
Oh, no, no. You learn every, learn something new every day. So what happens now to the bead makers of the world? Do they have to get scared of you? <laughs> so goofy. No. <laughs> okay, let's see here. All right. Hey, Paul. Let's see. Aunt Becca. Hi, Paul. Some so people coming in. Hi, Colleen. Yay. Hey, Colleen. And Janet, I think that's everybody we said hello. If I missed. All right. Missed see you later, it. Beck. Okay. Enjoy here we your go. tours. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Drama, only in the minute. <laughs> Headshot, only in the golden now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that one, like, they look like seashells almost. Yeah, yours do. Doesn't that kind of remind you of one of the little seashells? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oop, cleaning out the fridge. Aunt Beck's cleaning fridges. Well, fun. Okay, let me I try probably this. need to eventually do that to my fridge, but. Eventually. You don't do it every <laughs> Not day. Not happening today. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Okay. I'm going to try again. Oh. Oh, I think I got it this time. Anyone is welcome to come up here with us. Except oh, Paul what? says he sees a cone, not a seashell. He sees a cone, not a seashell? Yeah. He has to be difficult, doesn't he? Who's this? <laughs> I know what he sees. <clears throat> oh, I knew what I was going to do. So if you're working on something, you can you're welcome to come join us here. Now you don't have to make beads with us. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. You can I paint a picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you didn't send that woman didn't send her, you? Yeah. She is. She's just got different papers. Mm -hmm. That's Pam. That hey. woman. Hey, yeah. Pam. Hi. <laughs> He's the same one that was talking to you last night, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. She has that many Pam. I wouldn't know. <laughs> This is one of my men's. <laughs> I have two men'sies in my life. This is just one of them. Yeah, I think mine's. I think mine's going all kind of clunky. And I'm not so sure. I think that's just me trying to figure out that cutting. So I'm wondering. Hmm. No, I'm just gonna go with it. But I'm gonna. This is gonna be my total disaster round. I'm just gonna figure this out um, because that. But many of them. Have you, 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 I'm not crazy about the way that's turning out. What's the plan? How many are you gonna make it? Is all them um, there? Just... Well, at least these. But this one is a bust. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one. I don't like that. So I think it's going to do that every time. So I think everyone will cut those in half again. Well, it's not going to do some chores. I've got the arm of the salad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. okay. Yes, I'll have your asparagus on in an hour or so. Woo. Are you making asparagus for dinner? I am. That's all they're allowed to eat. <laughs> Um, I'm making a, we have leftover Sunday. pork. <laughs> it's not even Sunday. We have leftover pork and then there's some asparagus. So it's going so to. So do you like grill, like, do you like fry it? No, like, not like fry it, but put it in like a skillet and cook it up. 
I roast my asparagus. Do you? I prefer mine done in a bit of butter and myself. Well, then you're more than welcome to go <laughs> in the kitchen and take just, care of that. I wouldn't mind a bit. Let's do it. What way do you do it again? Did you used to do it again, sorry? I roast. <laughs> Look. I know. I'm like my mom that. would put it in a cast iron skillet and mm -hmm. put it on the stove and cook it up. I do that with like my Brussels sprouts. I do those in a, like I kind of pan fry those, saute, I guess you'd call yeah. those. Yeah, saute. But for my asparagus, I like, I like my green beans that way too. They get kind of crunchy. So they're like little crunchy yumminess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what this one's doing here. Okay. Okay. That's it, fenced on. Awesome. Yeah. I'm just going to put spares in it. Okay. See fun. you later, Pam. See ya. <laughs> Bye. And doing this keeps us off of Keisha, right? <laughs> Keeps us away from Keisha. All right. He's gone now. The wolf is gone. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a new friend meeting my old friends, I'd say I'd apologize, but I can't because I just love them too much. They're a little... They're a little on the crazy side, but then you guys don't know me that much either. <laughs> I'm kind of crazy myself. <laughs> no. You want to come say hi, Brianna? Yeah. My daughter's going to come say hi. She's my 20 year old. Oh, fabulous. Hello. Hey, aren't you beautiful? I was expecting like this little tiny girl. No, nah, I'm her 20 year old. Oh, wow. Well, I have oh, my little so girl. Cute. She's a little blonde. But this is Brianna. Hello, hello. Hey, hey, <laughs> so my car's in the garage. Okay, you didn't as you were backing it in. No. Okay, I about did though because I'm like, oh, sh you haven't done this like, in a while. You didn't break off the mirror and on the side of the garage. No. <laughs> did that once. I don't want to do that again. All right, I will see you after camping, okay? They say hi. Hello, persons. That's Becca. She lives in Texas. She's one of my friends. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, Pam. And this daughter. one is Joni that's in there. Hi, Joni. I've heard a lot about you. Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah, she's the one that I gave that owl charm to. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I in my car. Oh, for the yes. thing. I thought those would be perfect hanging. You know what? I haven't got one in my car yet. I need to put one in mine. See, I have a spider that she made. She's deathly afraid of spiders. Okay. I love it. See, it well, I have to right make there a different on one. Pole. That's not a spider. I'm huge oh, in the Oh, she likes, she'd probably love this. Oh, the little owl. Yeah. <laughs> I love his little hair. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of owls, so she's making little like hands. Oh, you want to show you here? Your little hands. <laughs> she's like a fabulous crocheter. What you making? Paper beads. How's that going? It's okay. I've made one other one so far. Cute. Made a little smaller. I will see you on Monday. Okay. See ya. Love you. <laughs> Myra is inside, uh, but I'll let her out. I just put her inside so I can pack my car. And okay. Sound good? Yep. Thank you. Love you. Love you too. That's a magnet. Oh, that's cool. But see, this was the flower I was making. And I go, you know, when I only had like five petals, that kind of looks like a hand. So then, you know, I started playing around with it and sure enough, so I altered the pattern enough 
But this mm -hmm. is the pattern that I got the hands from. Oh, and now it's fingers. <laughs> and now I've made, oh my goodness, I don't know how many tiny little hands. They're so cute, though. <laughs> I love them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they make me giggle. I get, I've made, I don't know, I'm still giggling every time I make one. Now that's a good craft when the, you're still giggling. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you make something and you get it going and you're putting it together, and like, oh, this is so cute. Oh, I love this. Oh, I should show you the beads that I did. Okay, let me see. Did you paint these? Well, I stamped on beads, like with my little stamp set. So I uh -huh. have this like little bug stamp set that has all these oh, different stamps. Cute. And so I cute. took it and I like would like rotate it and stamp the whole thing on there. And these ones, I, like, collared on them with marker around it. And you, so now, did, it you do this, it. did you do this before or after you cooked it? Or is that a baked clay? No, these are just wooden beads. A wooden beads. Oh, okay. Yeah, these I are just wooden saying. that I got from the store. Oh, what? That's so cute. So I just stamped, like, little... How do I never think of these things? Right? Janet says those are cool. Those are super cool. Look at that. Like I have oh a butterfly one that I collared in. So all nice and colorful. Wow. You're going to have every... Okay, next week, <laughs> we're going to be stamping beads with Pam. <laughs> Everybody go get your wooden beads stamps out. Those are so cute. But when you're making like a little charm or toggler, what do you call those that hang off of the, a toggle? You could put one of those little beads on there as a, I don't know. That's, I could turn those into stitch markers even. Yeah. That would be neat. Okay. So I do have other papers. Maybe I shouldn't sit here and do the same paper the whole time over and over again. Well, I have a whole stacks of paper. Like, you'd be shocked with how many, like how big my stack of paper is. Um. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I went through mine. I did go through my papers and pulled out some. And I thought these were pretty with the pink and green. Like do a little pink and green. Yeah. Bead set. And you know it'd be cute though. Almost, even. You kind of almost already have your lines marked too. I know. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> and I think these would be cute to make up. Like if you had somebody who for you could make a little kid like their own little beading kit so you can make them make the beads and then put uh, it in the tackle box in the bathroom. is there somebody in the bathroom no there was no food in the bathroom i was using uh -oh. and then they hey, home. Home. Ah. oh my goodness no. No, oh. Oh. well do you want to say hi to my friends don't be grumpy just say hi to them Want to say hi to Hello. Say hi. hi. This is Elizabeth. Hello. She's my eight-year-old. She's oh, yelling man. at me because apparently the bathroom was all out of toilet paper. Yeah, and nobody heard me. But did oh, you get to take care of? Did you use a washcloth instead? <laughs> Do you need a roll of toilet paper? Do you need a new roll of toilet paper? <laughs> That's frustrating. They say hi, Elizabeth. Yes, and then yes. she walks away and she meows. <laughs> uh, well, that's tough when nobody's listening and you need toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. Gram, Grammy Colleen has an idea. She says, um, can you use those at the end of an eye cord for a poncho? Or like your you know. jacket. Ah. Okay, so I have my jacket here. Yes, show your jacket. I could this put, is put some beads on the end and then put this over 
That's if um, I could feed it through. I might have to unstitch my end because I already stitched up my end. But that's not hard to do. But I should have left jacket. unstitched, but I didn't. But I'll next unstitch jacket, it. Pam. <laughs> yeah, this is my jacket. I don't know that's if gorgeous. everyone has seen it. Because not everyone watches my channel that's on here. But this is my jacket. Let me lift you up. <clears throat> This is my jacket that I made. And so I have my little cord here that I could put some beads on the end. And then I have my little cord stop thing here. And this is a second jacket that I've made. Maybe I'll go grab my other jacket. Oops, here it is. <laughs> it is very pretty. She did a um um a video of it showing it the jacket. So go check out her channel and yeah. I got your link in the description. And then I also have this jacket here that I made before the summertime. So it was still like winter, springtime. So it was getting into springtime. So it was getting hotter. That looks like, I mean, your jackets look like something I would buy in the store. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, just isn't saying. that how clothing is supposed to be? Is something that you would like to buy? Well, I would, yes, but um, I mean, I'm not, that's, I don't mean that in the insult. I just mean it's very good work. It's well, very yeah. good. Yeah. Well, most of the time when handcrafts, when I make, don't expect good work when I make something. <laughs> like this one, I also put like little hidden pockets in, but the pockets are I smaller. Like that. Yeah. And then I got that pocket. And then this side over here. I mean, look at all these different, you know, it's funny there because I was listening to you to, you know, talk about how you had to think, you had to sit and think about how you were going to work that pocket in there. And I found that to be something most exciting about sewing and doing your own patterns is trying to think how to do that, you know? Yeah. Well, in sewing, you can make things different. You can add your own um twist on it yeah so when i wore Very this one nice. i was always trying to find the pocket on the side and i was like okay if i make another one i have to add a pocket on the side because it's not going to work if there's not a inseam right. pocket for the next one right I would say she would definitely be the person we'd all be going to in town. <laughs> Her seamstress. Very good. Very good. Ah. So this is what I was thinking with these little butterflies. I thought oh, that yeah. I could the little bead as the body and maybe do like a you know a cutout of like a tissue or something and have this like three be 3d somehow maybe i need to get i should have got two packs i can't do yeah. that now because i don't i bought these a while back i doubt they have them but that you well, know i haven't idea, seen anyway. any of that kind at the dollar store no, I don't know. I just happened to find these one day and thought, those are kind of pretty. And it was after I met y'all. So I thought, I think I'm going to get those. I'm sure at some point I'll think of something to do with them. I think they're, well, actually, I thought they'd be really pretty kind of like um, hung all over my daughter's door. But then I found some others, these that I want to put up. They're like moths. So oh, I yeah. thought that one's super like stickers. 
but for a picture, you know, it's my daughter's room is like magic themed. So it's unicorns and mermaids and yeah, you know, all the things that a girl's like. Yeah, my daughter likes unicorns too. Anyway. Mm hmm. They're so close in age. We'll have to do a little. Um, I'll have to have Boo send her something because it's good for her schooling. Yeah. We'll do oh. Yeah. So I thought that that yeah, like the butterflies. Let me get that back out. This is what I was mean in here. Different papers that could use for either. I mean, look at how interesting that looks just with the. So Clean, Clean's asking if we do junk journals. I don't know if she's asking it to me or to you. Um. Well, I <clears throat> do you, Pam. Do I do junk journals? Yes. Some, I've been kind of getting into it. I can show you what I've done so far with what I have. I've only really made like two. I can't really see it. That one. So I have this little thing here. And I did this along with one of Aunt Beck's um, lives where she was making the paper bag journal thing. Oh, cute with paper bags. Yeah, and then I just used my other paper and stuff. So I haven't finished it, obviously. But so I just added, like, little paper in there. And then I have this little tab on the bottom. And I, I like, um, typed out. Well, I stamped, like, oh, cute. letters on each of them. So yeah. I have, like, the letter A and the letter B. <laughs> And letter C and D, you know, just all stamped out on there. This little tabs that I got from the store. Very, very cute. And then this one, like this, and it. Mm. And it just kind of hides it. And there's this little pocket here. And then the pocket here. And then this little like pocket. Cause I found this like, um, it's almost like a thrift store, but it's um, like, it's not donated stuff. He buys it from like Amazon returns and like, returns that Target gets and those kind of things. And um, there was a box that had a bunch of these little, like, I guess they like library pockets or whatever that you would do, use for like the little return library cards or whatever. I don't know. That's what they look like to me. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. But yeah, so I put them in some of my stuff. Like, I even put it in my little planner that I put in my purse. Because then I can put my kids' um, vaccine record thing in there. Or, like, appointment reminders and stuff. And I have a little pocket there, too. And during that live that we did with Becky, um, I guess I ended up winning her... Um, giveaway of the journal that she was working on and i have it sitting yes. right here oh pretty this is yeah, becca she... from in here becca no from aunt beck's creations aunt beck. okay gotcha yeah oh pretty. so like this little paper clip oh. thing here And then it has this little card here that she did. And then basically a little saying on there. And then her little journal thing. 
with her little tag thing there, a little pocket that she put like a little mandala thing in and little hanging tag things. Oh, pretty. I like just something simple like that. It's so, it, it makes such a big difference. Just something so small like that. Yeah. When you put it on anything, you know. Okay, I've made everybody moderators. And that way you guys can share your channel links. And you don't have to put them in there. Everybody should be. All you have to do is click on the little buttons to the side, the three buttons, and it'll say go to channel. And you can go there. You can right click it and open it in a new tab. And you guys can all, um, because the cool thing about that, now what you're saying, I know she does, doesn't she? Um, so, Colleen, that's what um, I was watching. I got fall. I fell into them somehow. I don't know how, but I fell into it. And I was getting to do the same thing. So I had been writing up my patterns and practicing my little appliques. And just for my little ones, I was going to do a little journal. And I thought, what a fun thing to do. I can have a little pocket and have the pattern come slide out and have the little applique glued on in a cute little scene or something yeah we'll learn together uh, let's do that let's make a collab project of doing a crochet journal that would be so fun some of the girls do like sewing journals and stuff we'll do a crochet one figure it out as we go i thought that would be a really neat thing and then i was at one of keisha's sales and she had um she had a uh, uh, what were they? The Masonic Lodge ledger pages. And I thought, oh, now I'm going to have to do a conspiracy journal, like a journal where it's just conspiracy <laughs> theories for fun, right? Because <laughs> that's just a hobby of mine. I find those fun to learn about. I'm not, well, I'm not necessarily one of them. I just find them interesting. And so I thought, so now I have two. I have two journals on my list of things to make. And uh, so we'll, so yes, so we'll do, a, okay, I'm going to write this down because I think that would be super fun to do it with somebody. And, um, and we'll do it like that. We'll pick uh, maybe one a week. It'll be a, instead of a crochet along, it'll be a journal along, a crochet journal along. Would that be? Okay. So I had been sitting there and I wanted to, I was trying to think, I actually bought a few different little ideas, uh, like little booklets or books I could use. So, but I haven't quite decided how, I, how big I want it or what I want it. Mm. I'm thinking maybe, <laughs> I'm thinking maybe like, uh, a, like a three ring binder. I'm almost thinking, what do you think, Pam? for the crochet journal. Do you think that would be too big? No. Cause I thought if I did it where I took, cause I'm only gonna do my small easy patterns. I'm just gonna do, you know, like a doily, it's simple things to start with. So I could do a sample of it in all of its stages to go along, you know, so almost like you're watching the cycle of life or something. I don't know, just thinking. Yeah. Mm. The beats. Back to beats. I was going to do a different paper. I like this pink. I think I'm going to try this one because I think this one is kind of pretty. And I'm wondering if I did it this way, you know, you would have... It that way you'd have those lines there I wonder if you'd be able to see that I kind of almost need to follow a line hmm oh on your paper 
Yeah, I don't know if I think that. Oh, well, you can get out a pencil and draw a line. <clears throat> I could. I could. <laughs> <laughs> For stripes. I wonder what those would look like. I almost wonder if it needs to be not so graduated. I don't know. Because the more graduated it is, the less the less you lose. So if the if it was shorter, you'd have a wider sides. Yeah. Is what I'm thinking. So where's my little trimmer? I'm gonna try this out here. Mm. So I'd want to cut it at a Bye Paul. Have a great day. Bye Paul. I'll be seeing ya. Okay. Like that. Yes, a giant, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, three ring. Yeah, because you know, with patterns, you almost want to be able to take it out. It's hard to hold it, you know, open. Yeah. Oh, I should, my paper, look what I did. I haven't done this in so long, I forget what I'm doing. I guess it's almost like riding a bike. I'll come back Maybe. to you. <laughs> I hope so. I had this friend that made, this would have been back in the 90s. And she made um, late 90s, 2000s, middle. She made... Um, all her own planners. <laughs> so she, she'd get out and so she journaled her own planners and she had one for everywhere. One for the car, one for her purse, one for the house. And you'd ask her, how do you keep up with it? She would, every time she was out somewhere, she'd write something down and ev so disciplined every night before bed, she'd make sure that everything was written in each and every one of them. <laughs> and put it, I mean, I just, Girl, you got way too much time on your hands, but that, she was that's good. That's a lot of keeping up with. She just did it. I don't know. I don't know. But then the other thing that she would do is for her daughter, she would do um, all, all, everything, not just for her daughter, but for her birthday parties, everything. <laughs> so her and I had birthday party wars for a minute. <laughs> To see who could outdo each other. Our thing was how cheap could we do it? <laughs> you know, so it's like, how much of this can you make yourself? <laughs> yeah. To have the cheapest but most awesomely rad. And I remember one year she had done um, Ladybug, a Ladybug party. And I mean, she had it, everything done by hand. Well, it was quite a feat that I had to give her props for that one. She did really good on that party. And so, yeah, she made everything. So she had quite a big paper scrapbooking. She's that time period. There's my clay. She was awesome. Oh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> not Mr. Deegan. <laughs> All right, bye guys. All right, here we go. She was very disciplined. I couldn't, and she kept it up. So it was like, you know, all of us would be like, we want to be more like her in New Year's resolution and all, but no. She did. She never missed nothing, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
You have the two kids, Pam. No, I have, um, well, I had Brianna that came down and Elizabeth that came down. Oh, three. No, three. I have like oh. six kids. Okay. <laughs> so I have a 22 year old. He lives in Virginia. He's in the Navy. Mm -hmm. And he has a baby. So he made mm -hmm. me a grandma. Nice. Um, and then I have my 12 year old. And my 10 year old. And then my eight year old, which is Elizabeth. And then my five year old, which is Timo. Mm hmm. Oh, wow. That's fun. Did you come from a big family? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's right. I like big families. I was an only child. But then I also... I have, an I have eight brothers and four sisters. Mm-hmm. So it was a big family. <laughs> that's nice. Where were you? Where's your placement? I am number six. Wow. Um, so my sister that's just younger than I am, she was smack dab in the middle. Uh -huh. But my youngest sister, she's 13 years younger than I am. So... Um... There's quite a gap. But growing up, I did have to share a bedroom with her quite a bit. So you did. Yeah. Okay. See what my problem is here. Okay. And then my sister that's just younger than I am, um, she passed away in 2016. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. It happens. She had a brain aneurysm and passed away. Mm -mm. Although her family still keeps saying that she passed away from a drug overdose. I'm like, no, she did not. Mm. Well, she didn't, do, she didn't do drugs, but she was on a medication to help her. Um, Right. Help her with migraines. And she had pulled into a parking lot because she was having one of her really bad migraines at the moment. Uh huh. And she um, ended up passing out in the car in the parking lot. And she just got done talking to her daughter. And so she knew it was her time to go. Right. And because um, she told her daughter, she's like, because um, she had a three-year-old at the time. Because he's the same age as my 10-year-old um, now. But they were mm -hmm. three at the time. And she told her daughter um, to tell him that she loved him every day. Right. Because she knew she wasn't going to make it because she was having one of those really bad migraines. Right. Something was just telling her this wasn't right. Yeah. And they like probably that. found the pills in her car. Right. But it doesn't mean she overdosed. Right. It's like she was trying to like remedy that situation. And the even the right. coroner said that um, there wasn't enough in her system to um, have caused her to pass away. It was because there was a brain aneurysm. Right. That ruptured. But she had suffered from migraines for so long, like since she was 16, she had suffered mm -hmm. from migraines. And she passed away at 36. That's a long time to deal with that. Yeah. Well, she's got relief now. Yes. 
Like the moment I saw her thought. laying in the hospital bed, like she'd already <laughs> passed away. She'd passed away before we even got in there um, to the hospital. Cause they had called saying, you need to gather everyone together and make it here as soon as possible. And so of course I have a 12 passenger van. So I was able to gather everyone that lived near me. I was right. able to gather everyone up and I told my husband and he's like, I'll drive <laughs> because it's not going to affect him as much as it affected right. the rest of us. Yep. So he drove while we were passengers and we dropped all the kids off at his parents' house. Why we went out there to the hospital. Mm-hmm. But when I entered the room, I kn knew that she had suffered from a brain aneurysm. It's like just one of those things that you have that sense about that you're like, oh, this is what happened. You know? Right. They didn't have to tell me anything. That's what I knew. Even though they were saying something different. It's like, no, this is really what happened. <laughs> Whether they want to believe it or not, that's what I believe. <laughs> but, right. Colleen says that she has one sister, one brother who passed at 12 from asthma complications. And she has, she has four kids. She's got a big house, too. House full of kiddos. Yeah. Yeah, four kids. Not bad. Well, I just have four kids at home now, too, so. Mm. My other kids are moved out in a way, but. But yeah, just four kids at home. That's, 12, 10, yeah. 8, and 5. 12, 10, 8, and 5. Yep. Um, yeah, I have, we won seven. She was our little miracle baby. She almost didn't make it. Yeah. But she's here now and she's tearing up the place. <laughs> but she's at her grandma's today, right? <laughs> she is. She's at her grandma's for she stays with her until she wants to come home. Well, so that's they, fun. Yeah, they, uh, they hang out and play and go shopping and I don't go anywhere or leave much and so this is kind of her chance to you know, get to do things I don't get to do. You know, yeah. she's not able to do around here. Uh, my mom lives up in the mountains, so it's absolutely beautiful there. And she's got her own room and her own craft room. And so. Well, that's They fun. have a very special relationship. Yeah. So. Mm, they get to do that. About, I think it'd be every, about once a month. So she'll go up there for a couple of weeks and then she'll stay home, you know, a week or two, whenever they get tired of each other Then she'll come home and she stays with a, you know, here for a month and she'll be like, I want to go back to grandma's. And so she goes up there for a week or two. Well, does she just do homeschool type stuff then? Yeah. So my mom can do all that up there. Well, that's fun. That makes it easier. Well, you know, we're all older, you know, and she doesn't, she's not got any siblings and she doesn't have young parents. So the, the opportunity for her to have with my mom is something that she's only going to have. And she'll be young when she loses that. And as yeah. we all know, that's rough. And I, we wanted her to just really have the ability to, to form relationships with all of us around her so that, you know, she's got some guidance as she gets older. I always tell her, I say, you know, if you ever want to ask me a question, you can just 
close your eyes and ask me and I'll answer you in your head. It'll even be my voice <laughs> because we can all do that. If you are, you, they don't even have to be dead. I, I'll think of something. I'll be doing something and I'll think, wonder what I should do here. And I can, you know, who'd know my dad. And if it's not something I can call him about, you know, I'm not talking about advice of like stock folios. I'm talking about life advice. Yeah. I can think about what he'd say right there. And I hear it in his voice say to me, you know, you know what the right thing to do here is, you know. And so I want her to have that ability to do that too. It's called thinking for yourself. So I try to encourage her to have, you know, um, people that she can trust building those thoughts in her head so that she's not, you know, uh, manipulated when we're not around. You know what I mean? Yeah. It might sound morbid, but in you have older, you're older and have kids, it's kind of hard not to think that way. I'd be, I would be a bad parent if I didn't, you know, I would look at it like that. If it wasn't preparing her for the inevitable, I'd feel like I was being a bad parent. Yeah. Well, I homeschooled my two oldest for three years, but I did it through like a K-12 program, so UTVA, mm -hmm. which is a Utah virtual academy type um, yeah. homeschool thing. And so they provided everything. They provided all the materials and everything. And it worked out pretty good, but my kids like got tired of the work because we was always doing work it was always a they had like a set curriculum that you had to follow and you had to get so much done a day and all this other stuff and so it was a lot of work to do right and my kids got tired of it and then they're like no mom we want to go back to regular school we're done with this <laughs> that's sad that's sad Two, two at home. Oh, good. Okay. I'm not so, that's exactly what I get. I'm not so morbid after all. Because mm -hmm. I was 40, th uh, 42 when I had her. 42 or 43. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my yeah, husband's I, 11 years older than me. After I had my five-year-old. Like when he was a baby, I was calculating, like if I was to have another one, like what age would my be would I be if I was to have another one after right. I had him? And I was like, I'd be like forty two, like forty, forty two. I'm like, no, I'm done. Yeah. But after having him, he had conductive hearing loss when he was born. Mm hmm And so, um, He's had like five sets of, t well, maybe just four sets of tubes in his ears. Right. Um, when he was little. And because they did that to help with his hearing to like try to clear it up. He never really had an ear infection or anything. It was just um, hearing loss. Right. He can hear fine now. Sometimes sounds get too loud and then sometimes they're not loud enough. And so it just kind of varies on how his ears are working at the moment. But he's never had to have hearing aids or a cochlear or anything. Right. He just had the right. tubes put in that helped with his hearing. But after right. we put in the tubes that first set, he um, he was on he was like six months old, I think, and he jumped. Because somebody was walking by the pharmacy and they had one of those oxygen tanks and they had scraped it across the floor. Oh, man. And um, it made a loud sound. And it wasn't way loud, but it was loud enough. And he jumped. I'm like, oh, well, that's a good sign. <laughs> right. That is a very good sign. For sure. But then where so, I got it done, they didn't follow up with me very much about it. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up switching um, doctors because I took them up to primary children's to have that done. 
And so I ended up switching to the re regular ENT that my daughter had been seeing since she was a baby. Because Brianna right. would, would see the ENT when she was little. So she had her first surgery when she was like six months old. Uh -huh. Because she had to have tubes put in her ears also. But hers was for wow. a whole nother reason. Hers was because she had chronic ear infections. Right. And she um, had a soft palate cleft. Right. When she was born. So like that little hangy ball that's in the back of the throat. Um, right. She was missing that. Mm -hmm. And so, and so part, part, like the very back, like the soft part of the back of the throat, like if you stick your tongue back there and feel the softness back there, she was missing right. all of that. Oh, wow. And so they, they took like the flaps of skin that was back there and they twisted it, like moved it and closed up that space. Oh, interesting. Well, isn't that interesting? Granted, that was like 20 years ago, but still. Right. <laughs> wow. You can do all kinds like, of things. Things now. that can be done. Like when I was little, um, they used silicone bones to repair things. It's like a fake bone, but. Because I don't know if you guys know, but when I was four, I was kicked in the face by a horse. So right here, I have a scar that goes right along my face where they had taken and um, because when the horse kicked me, it like shattered my bone in my face. Oh, wow. And it pinched the nerve in my um, eye. So my eye doesn't work very well. <laughs> a lot of times <laughs> I see it like veering off. And that's because... Um, it um, has nerve damage and I'm legally blind in my right eye. But they, sure. had, they had put in a silicone bone in my face, so a fake bone. And then they wired it in. Um, they put like pieces of wire to hold it in place because the face was so fragile that they couldn't like take and put like screws and stuff to hold it in place. They had it like basically wrap it with wire and hold it in place and then when I would grown up I'd have little pieces of wire that would stick out of um, my nose right like right up here mm. I'd have little pieces of wire that would stick out every once in a while and so I go to the doctor and he'd pull out a little piece here and there and then one time he went uh, I went up and he pulled out like pretty much I think I still have a couple of pieces left in there but he'd pull out a long piece and he's like, now you might have a black eye for a couple days. I, I never had a black that eye. That was crazy. But so my face, it it's grown a little bit, but um, this side is pretty much the way it is from when I was four. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you just get, you're just used to it now. Yeah, well, I've dealt with it for 40 years, so mm -hmm. that's, you know, second nature. That's scary, though, with the horse. I bet that event yeah. was scary. Yeah. Do you well, remember it? You were so young. Do you really remember it? Yes, or do you, I do. You do, okay. So what happened is we was out in the, um, outside in the front yard playing um, ball with my cousins and my siblings. And um, we were out there playing and I kicked the ball and it went underneath the horse. And I was thinking, well, I'm the one that kicked it. So I will go get it. You know, being a four-year-old and thinking you're all confident and stuff. Sure. And so <laughs> I went to get the ball and I'm, I calculate in my mind, I'm like, okay, so the ball is closer to the back part of the horse. Um, so... I went behind the horse. I should have just gone on the side, like, you know, but it was like by the back feet. And so I went behind it because I was four, you know, I don't know any better. And it ended up kicking me. And so my brother runs back inside. He's like, mom, mom, Cam just got kicked. She's bleeding. You know, she comes out and she, um, 
she got me and my uncle was there because obviously his kids were there too. And I think my dad was at work. But we there was old enough kids that they could watch the other kids while she, um, she her and my uncle took me to the doctor. So we he drove, I don't know how fast he drove. He drove like really fast because we lived in Upalco and that's like by Aldemont and um, Bluebell in um, Utah. And then um, we drove all the way out to the Roosevelt Hospital because my grandma lived in Roosevelt and that was like the closest hospital. So we drove to that one. We pull up. And he goes in to see, and they tell him, um, you need to drive to Vernal. And so we, um, he got back in the car, and he drove to Vernal. And Vernal is like another 30 miles or so away from Roosevelt. I don't know how long it took to get out there, but it wasn't too terribly long because he um, – <laughs> was driving a starfire so it's like a car i don't know the model like the brand name but it was a starfire because that was a car my um dad had at the time and so we got in that and my mom held me and she made sure that i continued to cry she's like just keep crying don't hold it in just keep crying because if i had held it in and didn't cry then all the blood would have like um damaged more so crying like helped with the blood and everything but yeah wow that's scary <clears throat> oh so janet Burgess, the reason why they sent us from the roosevelt hospital to the vernal hospital is because in vernal they actually had a plastic surgeon a pl pediatric plastic surgeon out there at the moment and they had the facilities available, which was actually lucky because you can hardly see anything there. And so they had that plastic surgeon out there in Vernal. So we drove to Vernal because they had better facilities to um, take care of the situation. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's why they sent us from Roosevelt to Vernal. But if if they hadn't, they probably would have um, sent us to Salt Lake um, to like the primary children's or something. Um, if they couldn't have handled it in Vernal. But yeah, but it's it's all good. I, I've dealt with it for 40 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, when you're used to something, it just becomes part of you. You don't think twice about anything anymore. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, like um, Becca, um, like with the thing with walking behind horses. Yeah, well, whenever my kids would turn four, like when they were little, I would think about it and I was like, oh, goodness, you're so small. I am so glad that you're not um, in that kind of situation because. Right. It, it makes you think, scary. wow, how tiny you were. You yeah. don't think about it. So, yeah, I know your kids will do that to you every time. I'll think of something that happened to me and I'll be like, I was her age when that. Oh, man. You know, you think, wow, that's young. That's very young. Yeah. Four. Well, our first memories start at about age three. That's when you start to have your first memory. So by age four, most kids remember a lot of those years. That's where the memories will be. Yeah. Begin to really start to form. So you are right, right on that cusp of, um, of forming memories. And I thought it was interesting that you, you did get well, it appeared as if you got the clump when you're talking about your mother <laughs> coming out there to uh, to get you. I'm sure that's something that's scary for her as well. Oh yeah, I can only well, it imagine. Well, was also scary when I was born because I had the cord wrapped around my neck when mm -hmm. I was born. 
And so that's scary for any parent too. Yeah, you're just a special kid altogether. Yeah, because I also had shingles when I was four. Oh, wow. Let's see. <laughs> oh, man. I had lots of things, but it's all good. I, I survived them all. You know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So they say. Nothing's killed me yet. I've had a lot of things thrown my direction, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't figure, I figure it either takes a lot or it's just not, that's just not it for me. You know, I'm stubborn or I've just got more I'm supposed to do. Yeah. No idea which. Well, just not your time yet. No. Nope. Thank goodness. I think your little girl would miss you. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Let's Janet, um, it wasn't me that just gave my mom the works. Um, my little brother, after he was born, he had to go to the hospital and have her inside scraped. It was probably like maybe a month after, but she had appendicitis and her appendix burst after my brother was born. Oh, wow. And then, so she's lucky, you know, because this most of poor the woman. Day, <laughs> and then, and then we would like to jump from furniture to furniture. It's probably in Wyoming when we lived in Wyoming, but we jumped from furniture to furniture. Um, and there was a fork in the, um, on the floor. Oh, my goodness. And he was running, well, no, so he jumped from furniture to furniture and fell in the laundry basket that he was jumping across and ended up um, breaking something open. And then one time he was running around the floor in bare feet and he ended up stepping on a fork and stabbing his foot. <laughs> oh my goodness. So it reminds me, like, whenever I see a fork laying on the floor that my kids have left there, I always make sure to pick it up and put it in the kitchen in the sink so that my kids aren't going to step on it and have a fork go through their foot. Right. The, in, the national fork incident. You don't need yeah. a, a repeat. Oh, man. I had this friend in college that had um kids and I remember they'd be in like diapers and they would be walking around with a fork you know eating noodles and I'm just I'd sit there and I'd be like the kid doesn't walk that well to be walking around with a fork she didn't think anything of it though oh yeah they could stab themselves that's what I always thought you know we're kids that's what we do we don't think about that when we're kids. Nope. Nope. Oh, my What's gosh. My... Oh, I think I finally got it. I think this is my best bead so far. With my flat edge. I'm sorry. I got excited. Excitement overtook conversation. <laughs> oh, not a problem. Yeah, that's uh, fine that you're not chatting, Becca. We understand. <laughs> For me, but you should come up here, point your camera on you, come up here and make them with us. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't really know what to chat about. I don't, I don't really have anything. I mean, I do, but nobody wants to hear any of that stuff. I just, I don't know. I always embarrass myself when I do, when I chat. I'll jump on, I'll think, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to go up there and try to charm everybody. And then I say something stupid. <laughs> I was like, why do I do that? <laughs> but that's my quirkiness. Well, that's why I usually do like just process videos. It's mm -hmm. because I can edit out the weird stories that I start to tell when I'm talking. I like get totally sidetracked. And 
I'm just like, okay, well, they don't need to know about that. So I delete it out of my video. <laughs> if I knew how to edit, I don't know how to edit. If I could figure that out, I would probably put out a lot more stuff. I delete so many things and I have stuff sitting there like I'll listen to it. I go, no, I, no, I changed my mind. I don't know why I said those things. Oh, yes. Everybody is crafting. Everybody's. Oh, Becca's here. Okay. I'm going to say this. Hello, Hi, Becca. Becca. Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. I was just um, going to stay in the background, but you talked me into it. <laughs> yay. Oh, we know you secretly wanted to come on here. <laughs> I did. I did. Oh, Janet, so I were to say this about Janet's comment. So Janet, I couldn't, my grandson has just now been this last year. He'll be four in December. And it wasn't until this last year when he turned three that I could start watching him. And it's, he's not that he's wild or anything, but I'm so hypersensitive that he just, I was constantly like afraid he was going to fall off of everything. I couldn't even watch him. I couldn't watch him run in the yard. I couldn't watch him swing. I couldn't watch him at the pool. <laughs> He just made me nervous. Everything. So finally, because now I don't, ma I don't have to watch him. If he gets hurt, he's big enough to get over it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. How but old is when they're in that, He's climbing on furniture. He's doing normal, normal things. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, I was so worried about him. I just sat in this hyper act, you know, hyper, my heart racing and state all the time. So I did. I had to tell her. I said, "Look, I can't. I can't keep him anymore if you're not here." <laughs> but I now he's here. Hello, welcome. Hi, Sophia. So we've got pumpkins. Yeah, what's everybody's? Janet knows what I'm talking about. Okay, good. I felt kind of mm -hmm. bad, but then you know, I she she knows me, so it was all right. It's honesty better because then now I'm like bring him over all the time. He's welcome. What are you, what are we making pumpkins and you and uh, well, us three are up here doing beads and mine are turning out better today than they did last night. So I, I was last glad night you was said a, that last night was a practice. Yeah. Cause last okay. night they didn't turn out very well at all today. I, I not so bad, <laughs> not so bad. More practice. Yeah. Okay. And you use, now, I was thinking last night when I was watching you guys, mm -hmm. and I, as a kid, I remember using nail polish as like a varnish. Did you guys ever do oh, that with nail yeah, polish? I suppose you could do that with these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I so don't, do you yeah. just use them as like a clear nail polish? Oh, I should show you. I was you at a thrift store You could use nail polish, right? I mean, if you yeah. wanted to paint your beads, yeah. Where are those? Okay, I had found, oh man, where did I put those? I had found these pins and charms and earrings that were made from the 80s at this yard sale one time or thrift store. And I picked up the bag just because I, I remember making them. I think they're ugly. As but it was an, out, it was it was what crafts were nostalgia. in the 80s. Yeah. It was it was this nostalgia moment and I mm -hmm. was like I remember when they made these so I had to get the little bag. I think it was like a buck anyway. It didn't cost nothing. And I thought I could do like maybe some kind of you know, put them on a picture frame or I don't know yet. Oh, wow. I love nostalgia. Love it. Oh, yes. I, I have a lot of things collected because just because of that, that little fact, something right? that reminds me of something of my childhood or something. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, I got to tell you something interesting though. So, um, I lost some things with my first marriage that was mine, um, or just along the way during my life, but I had a miscarriage of justice take place. And, um, so suddenly um, well, what really, when I met my, um, uh, my husband here, things started showing back up for me, but in a little bit different way. So I had this trunk and the house we bought is my husband's ex-wife's parents. So his ex-in-laws who are my stepkids. So they grew up in this house. That one looks really nice. 
Oh yeah. It looks good. Yeah. That one turns out really good. Let's look at it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's Let's get it on screen really a little nice. bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, um, so anyway, the, my in-laws or my whatever, whoever's family, they're all family. We're all, we're like that. We're so, um, I inherited everything in here and they left a bunch of, you know, um, his ex wifes stuff here from when she was a little girl. She's a little bit closer to my age, right? There's all this stuff up there, including that same stinking trunk that I lost oh. only in a different color. And I thought, well, what are the odds? Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was supposed strange. to come back around to you. <laughs> well, it's not mine. Of course, it's my granddaughter's. But in the meantime, I get to be the keeper of it, you know? And right. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, There's it's a... like, yeah. And nothing I have is mine anyway. Mm -hmm. Everything in this house is everybody's. We don't. If you want it, you can have it. No sense of getting in a fight or arguing no. or stealing or Isn't any that of that. Silly. Yours. Hey, look, it's Beth. Beth, I'm I'm cheating on you, Beth. Hey, Beth. Hi, Beth. Winter themed bits. Okay, let's see. I'm sitting with a cuppa and a crochet blanket on. Oh, that sounds fantastically nice. It sure does. I wish it would get warm, cooler here. <laughs> I'm I'm ready for it to get cooler. We're still in the 90s. I'm not ready for it to get colder. <laughs> well, you're in Utah, so. <laughs> yes. It, it has done a number on me, like it getting cold and stuff. Yeah. It does that number, and that's where my cold came from. <laughs> We're getting making better, beads, though. Beth. We're making beads. Yes. I, d I asked everybody what they were doing and then we got chatting. <laughs> I had to go back and see what they said. Oh, what is everything? That's that right? not very nice, Beth. I'm wanting her to get a paper. Oh. <laughs> I'm to find the glove, though. I just got it. <laughs> she, she said she hopes she get a paper cut. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> and my beads are turning out better, uh, better than they did yesterday. So I don't know, Beth. These that's girls are a better influence or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's only because she's up next to us. So by comparison, they're better. <laughs> <laughs> And I think I've made just as many as I made the whole night last night. Yeah, yeah I have I do five done. <laughs> well, when I was looking up, like, to people making them, you know, I was like, I'm just going to look about this. There's, I mean, of course, there's some, these people have turned it into a full-blown art form. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're taking it to the, I mean, you think, what makes a person... Just wake up one day, make a make something like this and go, this is going to become my life. <laughs> I'm going to roll beads for the rest of my life. I know, right? Yes. And they're, they're, and they're happy. You know, I they want are. something like that, that, you know, I'm, I'm like this, I could do the rest. I can't know. I can't stick with one thing. That's why Me I do so many different crafts. I can't just do the one. Mm -hmm. I'm exactly, exactly the same way because I get bored too quick. Yep. Yep. My mind wanders onto something else. And yeah, I try well, to keep up with that Tunisian crochet thing. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. I get so bored of crocheting that I'm like, you know, I got to do something else. Mm -hmm. I, I can do like maybe one or two crochet, cro crochet stitches. And they were all ones that I learned when I was like six. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. I cannot, I cannot read a crochet pattern. I tried, I got one. I was like, I'm going to do, and I was like, what does this mean? That got <laughs> tossed aside and I just did the straight stitch back. Up. <laughs> I, was, I could get Work. like a whole hat done before I could even figure out one stitch. on the. <laughs> so yeah, that didn't work for me. <laughs> well, Joni, she can do some awesome crochet stuff. I, I haven't seen really anything except I seen that you showed us your little hands that you've been working on, which are amazingly tiny and small. Oh, um, 
look, I found another, when I was cleaning up, I found a new, like a peachy in my stash. Like, Whoa, I forgot I had that. And uh, so I'm making little, now I have eight different colors of hands. Look at how so they're like so adorable. They are oh, just, I love them. <laughs> so this was the pattern. I was originally trying to find little flowers. And so I was doing this flower back here. You can see it back there. I turned it into a magnet. And I thought those kind of look like fingers. So then I played around with it and I've, I've since altered it in about, let's see, I have one, I two, that. That is just three, so four, cool. five altars. Yeah. Oh, and then so cool. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, <laughs> so I have stacks, I just, little stacks of hands. They're just like this. They're like, Fabulous little stacks of them, little like a stack of oh my gosh. You need to put a I, I think it would be really cute as a pin to pin on your pin on your like winter jacket or something or on a or, or on a beanie hat. Be I think they would be cute on all kinds of things. You well, could put heavy, it on yeah. a ring. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it doesn't just have to be a magnet. Yeah. I have a I have a magnet board. So right here is an old ironing board. And Whoa, I hung yeah. it on the door. And then I stuck my little collections of things crocheted or felted little bits and pieces. And then up at the top, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a zombie on board. <laughs> <laughs> little zombie hanging out up there on the on the ironing board. Uh, Sophia, I do a bunch of different things, too. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, Zoila. Hi, Zoila. So like jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> yeah, they were pin cushions. Oh, how much fun is that? See, I love those old crochet pattern books, too. Yes. I've been collecting those. I'm sorry. What it, you guys were probably saying something really important. And I just got so excited that I told you no, my excitement fine. interruption. That's my problem right there. That's what I suffer from. Excitement interruption. Continue. <laughs> I just oh. suffer from interruption. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ask Beth. She'll tell you. <laughs> or just watch Beth and I. I try really hard though. When I'm on with somebody new, I try really hard not to. <laughs> right. Now that's hard. And you get, I get excited and I'm a thinker too. So if somebody says something that makes me think of something, I'm the one that go, Oh, <laughs> because if I don't say it right then and there, I'll forget it. And then it will be like, Oh, I had something so important. I want to say, and usually it's not really important, but in my mind it was. Right. Yeah. You know what I do? Cause, um, so I'm a writer by that's my first art. So I have notebooks and journals and paper and post-its and everything around me 24 seven. Whenever I'm talking to somebody, cause I had that same problem and then they were saying something really important and I'd end up, they'd forget. And I'd be like, oh. bummer, because I really wanted to hear what they had to say. So I started writing it down. So whenever somebody says something that inspires me, I whip out my pencil and I jot down this idea. And now my family knows me and sometimes they still find that to be rude, but you know, <laughs> Can't you ever not than... have a thought? And I'm like, no, I can't. Thank you. But um, continue. It's, it's better than interrupting. That's a great idea. I, I need Yeah, to try that because it really helps me. And it helps me not forget either because a lot of times I love what the person is saying and they forget too. And then I like conversations. So I like the back and forth. So I do. I keep notes on everything and I have notes after notes. This one's actually not so bad. Then my daughter doodles on him. I write down things like Paul Simon's in here because I'm sure there was a song or I write, I mean, they're just literally drawings that I think of stuff that crosses my mind, you know, from everything. So yeah. I have those well, constantly. My family challenges. is really bad about, we all just talk over each other. You know, I mean, I was, I, I was going to say that, you know, my mother, I'm not from a big, I mean, my, my back family, my, what is that? My mother is eight kids and stuff, but you know, she just had the two of us, 
um, but holy, holy, my goodness, Pam, you saying you have a big, no, you don't have a big, you have a huge family. <laughs> you were saying, and I have <laughs> brothers and I was like, oh, that's not too bad. Nine kids. Then she goes on to say how many sisters she has. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's a nice big family, Pam. <laughs> oh. I, I think yeah, I used to are. tell that my siblings that I wanted more kids than my mom had. Oh, <laughs> that, that quickly changed. Oh. <laughs> you know, oh, well. you get older mm -hmm. and you're like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to have that many. <laughs> mm. Oh, is that, that's what I was guessing, Irish, that his accent was Irish. I could talk yeah. to him all day. Well, he could talk to me all day. I no, would. you'd get tired of him after a I while. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> yes, he's from Ireland. And so I have lots of European and Irish friends. In fact, I would say for a while, I had more European friends than I had American friends. So I'm very good. at. I can listen. I can, I even have a Scottish friend and I can pay attention when they're talking together. I can now hear them. <laughs> See, when they talk to me, they're slower, but when they get talking to each other, it, you know, forget about it. It's harder yeah. to follow. And they have their yeah. own slang and their own short words for things that even though I might know what they're saying, I still say something. Okay. Now they lost me again. Well, <laughs> so, but now I've gotten it. Um, so years of it about four four years yeah so uh so how long i want to know so um what was um i do have questions because i thought of them if i ever got people up here i was going to ask them questions oh so, no i know <laughs> no it's a good question it's a good question oh i was thinking um I started doodling people like you guys inspire me to do all kinds of weird things. Where was it? I was just flipping through. Like here's my, cause I made this crochet birthday cake, like cupcake. And oh, her yeah. hair, it looked like a, a person if I just finished the face. So then I was like, Oh, I could draw. I wonder if I could sketch out and then crochet those little people, you know, the little family members. So the, here's one of my little sketches. And then Becca, was that you that was doing the pumpkin? Who was doing the pumpkin roll the pumpkin? Not was it Mrs. Gigi? I think Mrs. Gigi. Was it? Well, I, I did it, but I didn't get the finished color in it. But anyway, so you guys could see. Remember, I said I was gonna do it hmm? along with you. Hang on, Miss Gigi, you There's still mine. did you do the Mrs. Did you do the roll of pumpkin? I, we did a pumpkin, but we didn't roll anything. We had stickers that we used from Pam. Pam sent us stickers, right? Was it Pam? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it was Mrs. Gigi that did it. That was, that's so cute. That turned out cute. That would be awesome, Janet. Um, okay, yes, yeah, so I want to show you a couple of things. So one, well, I have to have a... Flying, your fly bats? Yes, I just to remember my fly bat. Oh my God, they're so cute. <laughs> Uh, stop it just <laughs> oh, come on i mean i gotta draw those again like and put those are stinking adorable the fly bats okay questions <laughs> um okay how many laundry baskets and I, when i'm talking about laundry baskets i'm referring to any type of basket that could hold laundry that is not holding laundry and the ones that are holding laundry okay. how many do you think you have in your house think not just guess <laughs> how many do you think you have one, two five you think you have five i think i have five Okay, Pam, how many do you think you have? <laughs> I'm counting. But I, there's just three of us in the house. So that. Because <laughs> so. I have a laundry basket for each of my kids that they put their laundry in. Janet says three. Oh. Now, this is laundry baskets, any kind of large basket. Oh, so like dirty clothes, like a hamper? 
You're, you want me to count anything. the hamper too? Oh, yeah, then I add some more. How to reword this question? What I'm trying to get at is that I have come to realize that we we think like I've asked a lot of people in my old life that it, I'd go through their house. How many laundry baskets do you have, girl? There's like <laughs> ten laundry baskets. And if you asked her outside of there, she'd be like, I don't know, a couple. She's thinking like you, the ones that are grow her food, her clothes are in, right? No, you have probably twice as many, if not three times, that are full of other things that have oh, other like things. Other thing. Oh, like other things. Oh. Well, see, I I can see right. two baskets right now <laughs> that I can look at that have yarn in them that's just off to the side of me. Mrs. Gigi. Right, there you go. See, Mrs. So Gigi I'll show you. The truth. A mess. <laughs> but see? Uh huh. Oh, there you see two stacks. So that's what I'm counting. Them. So yeah. how many of those <laughs> you have in your house? And I bet you have twice as many as you think you do. <laughs> and I pro and I probably have like maybe three of those in my closet upstairs that holds um, blankets and sheets and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then um, for my kids. Um, I have a laundry basket so I can sort their laundry and put laundry in each one of their laundry baskets. And then I have a dirty laundry hamper that we put our dirty laundry in. That's like a mesh one. And mm -hmm. then my daughter has a basket that I got her that um, has unicorns on it. It's a little pink mm -hmm. basket. And she puts her dirty laundry in that. Uh, but they each have a basket. So there's like at least five baskets so that's it yes oh well, and I then have, I do have like maybe two more laundry baskets, <laughs> baskets back there <laughs> that have yarn in them so, well uh, we, at least you didn't say how many laundry baskets do you have laying around that don't have clean clothes and aren't put away Probably half of oh, my baskets. Have there's like at least, there's I am at least horrible. three baskets. Like my daughter's basket. Oh, we got her laundry put away. But my son's basket in his bedroom still has his laundry in there that's clean that hasn't been put away yet. And then I think I have one in the laundry room that's clean, but it's just stuff that my that my um, niece was sewing away. And so I brought it home and cleaned it. Because it had a lot of my sister's socks in them. And so I need to go through and gather out my sister's socks and give them back to her. <laughs> but that has clean stuff in it sitting in the laundry room. And then my son, well, he has a laundry hamper. And then he has a basket in his room that he puts his stuff in. So Is there going to be prizes? Beth wants to know who, the one with the, the most uh, bas uh, baskets get, gets a prize. <laughs> <laughs> oh man do you see the conversation that gets started about i know laundry? now if you're saying about totes that you have that have fabric in them i probably have at least 20 totes that have fabric i used i used to have that and then i moved and had to sell so i sold off all of my fabric i had because i worked at a fabric store in the 90s um and uh, you know you you know you just buy fabric you just buy it. It <laughs> oh, the fabric is so beautiful it is so beautiful i know and i've started my collection up again now my now my i don't sew so although i want to but most of my pieces are fat quarters so most of, you know they're smaller pieces but lately i've been buying yardage and that's harder to hide and it's harder right <laughs> harder to <laughs> <and hide. laughs> Right. Right. I might have right. to start, uh, using those. <clears throat> right. This is true. Well, that's just totes that I have. So I probably have at least like over 30 handmade, like reusable bags. Oh, yeah. That uh -huh. I use that have fabric in it. Have fabric in it. And then I have like six, like 13 gallon trash bags that have scraps of fabric. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I have a lot. I really need to start sewing or I need to just stop buying the fabric because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Um, I don't know if I'm in your group, um, Becca, on Facebook, because I don't use Facebook that much, but to get to, I'm just worried I'd never remember to check it. <laughs> I never, hey, Joni, I don't remember to check it. So, okay. so yeah. I just don't want you to think like not, if I go on there, I can't tell you how often I'd remember. No, to be I'm not, I don't very yeah. often. Yeah, I don't, I, I will, I'll forget about it for sometimes two weeks and then I'll go back and I'll see somebody post something and I'm responding and I feel guilty that I didn't respond to them earlier. I kind of just had, I, I, I have it for the people that I know personal. Here's the funny thing. People I know personally don't use YouTube. They use, they, they, and, and, and they craft, you know, like my, I have family members that craft and really good friends from, geez, from my high school that craft, but they don't care to come on YouTube and watch me or share. So that was kind of why I put it on there is um, I did it, you know, so that I would, could, could stay in contact crafty wise with those people. But to be honest with you, it's most of my YouTube people that go on there and use it. So it's okay. okay. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not, um, every once in a while I'll remember to say, Oh, share that. I want to see it. And I'll get it on my channel. And, and, um, I try to put stuff on there, but Beth usually is the one that yells at me and says, post that. And so, you know, is she's, it, bo um, she's bossy. Is the Facebook then is the, who, which Beth's group is it? Is it on the Joni has not? Oh, Beth. Okay. Beth, what is the, it's the different Beth. That's Becca. You know, I'm trying to learn everybody's name. That's that, what that, I yeah. messed up now. Beth, here. Beth is very busy on her channel. She's all she posts oh, everything she it. does, and she and she posts when people are a lot things like that. She's real busy on hers. And what is it, Beth? Bethy's crafty something, Beth. Yeah. Hey, let me go over oh. here and um. She's in, she's on my, Beth's Crafty, that's what it is. Beth's Crafty with an apostrophe mixed media room. Oh, look, okay. she's, that's her. Beth's crafty mixed media room. Yeah. So now everybody should be uh, blue now. So you can all, all li share links or whatever if you'd like to or go to each other's. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Great minds think alike, Beth. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes, yes. Okay, so be bossy right there. <laughs> My next question. I love you, Beth. Joni, Janet wants your yes. address. She wants you on. I see that. Group. Yeah, that's what we were doing about the face the Facebook group. Yes. I ship over. I'll tell you, I ship over to Ireland. Um Every couple months or so, we ship over a care package. We got stuff coming, and it is insanity, insanity, <laughs> insanity. But yep. I just do it anyway because it's what I, you know, we do. But it is crazy. We had a couple boxes shipped over, and it, and our biggest problem was that stuff would be wouldn't would go back. We had stuff sitting in customs, two big boxes, two hundred dollars to ship each one. Yeah. And they, it was nuts, but now they're getting, I guess they're getting used to us because now finally we're, we're getting stuff there much quicker. I think the last mail took about two and a half weeks. Maybe it was much shorter. So did you live in Ireland? No. Oh, oh. I just have friends there. Oh, okay. Family. Yeah. Uh, because that's Shannon. Um, right before, she, for her 40th birthday, what she wanted to do was she was going to go over and, and hike and, and visit. And then instead she decided to marry me. So, so she didn't do that. And, um, but it's still, of course, on a bucket list that she wants to do that. And um, I, it would have been, you know, I don't, I, there's really not much. I, I don't think, I, of course, I can't hike anything, you know, be a little rough right. in my wheelchair to go hiking. So I'm not going to be able to do it. Um, so, yeah, but I've, I've always wanted to try to do some sort of research for her so that I'd love for her. You know, I kind of, I kind of feel guilty, you know, that, you know, that I got, you know, her 40th birthday present. Right. I, I feel kind of bad about that, but um, I'd love for that her to be able to do that. Uh, her, her heritage is, I think, I think, um, yeah, Irish. It's I was going to say Scottish, but no, it's Irish. Mm hmm. Yeah, um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm from, I, I'm Irish. Well, half or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My grandfather came over here uh, on a boat when he was a little orphaned child and was adopted by a Scottish family in New York City. Oh, look. Yeah, they were used to do that. They'd steal all babies, bring them over here. <laughs> But anyway, watch. Good luck, little one. Good luck, little man. Although back then, you know, when you were 12, you were no longer little and working, working your butt off. Yes, you like noticed that right away because of your name. He heard when um with Colleen or Colleen, he says, oh, that's an Irish name. She's Irish, she says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always on the lookout at those sales for anything, you know, that's Irish related. There was a, oh, I, oh, some, one of the sales I saw, I didn't get it. I think it was Keisha's and it was like a, uh, uh, a mute, I don't even remember what it was. And I was like, what do you think about it? Get it, get it, get it. And then I said, but I didn't get it in time. <laughs> Just to see stuff. You know, it's easy to find stuff here. It's harder to find stuff from over there. It's kind of fun to look through them, you know, and just I love love looking at old stuff. And I've already seen my magazines. I want to see other people's magazines. I got it in a uh oh. Ooh, it's, a, it's a, that airplane magazine. I got an airplane magazine, but it's for pilots from 1950. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. I just want you to know. <laughs> the pilot, you know, it's that's their that's business. That's rich people. That's just fascinating. It's business to rich people. That's right. <laughs> it's, you know, corporate. What are they selling me? Okay, yeah. I'm going to cut this out. And I think I'm going to cut this out as a background to that. What do you guys think? That's what I'm going to do. Okay. You know, Warren? My other, yeah, so what was your very first? craft like what what did you first get your hands on that you were like oh this is nice like myself like what I, like what kind of craft I like working on no like when you were young what was the first thing you ever made that you you were hooked on crafting I guess the oh, right way to the very first thing was um I crocheted and I crocheted uh, clothing for my little stuffed dog. Nice. And I, and I learned how at six years at six, I had an aunt teach me how to crochet and that would probably, that's my very first. And then I, then my mother was a sewer and took up in sewing. So I've been doing all kinds of, it was mostly fabrics and, you know, fiber arts. And then uh, paper right. arting just came for four years ago, really. Like, oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this was, this is the one that finally hooked you. Um, no, it's just, um, I, I actually, I have a degree in fashion technology and I went to school for, you know, and for fashion nice. and sewing and all that. So that's, wow, that's rad. That's what I, uh, would love to do, but I ended up becoming a nanny and, um, <laughs> that put me off, you know, um, off of going and doing something no. with my sewing. So, right. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. And well, then, I then, think and then I got hurt and I stopped sewing and, um, you know, right. and paper was easier to do than so. true that's that that's how I find with crochet. Cause I was, I sewed mostly, but now crochet I can do, I can't sit and sew anymore like I used to. So you find something else, but, um, mm, okay. What about you, Pam? Well, when I was little, we used to do, like, 4-H and stuff. Yeah. But, like, I remember making, like, little um, clothing for my Barbie dolls and stuff. Mm -hmm. well, I still have yes. some little stuff that I would make, 
But they were like off cuts from like, like, a, like bigger clothing. So there was this sleeve, and I really liked the design on the sleeve and the cuff. And so I cut that off because they were just going to throw it away. So I cut it off and used it for like a dress for the Barbie doll. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and you still, you say you still have that? Yeah, I do. Awesome. That's neat. It's not accessible at the moment. It's yeah. back in a tote in the back room. Um, and fabric is surrounding the area. So it would and take a minute to get to. <laughs> That's kind of, you know, with my mom sewing and stuff, that's kind of, you know, where it went on to, you know, wanting to make clothes for my stuffed animals, you know, <laughs> was seeing mm -hmm. my mom make clothing and stuff. And Well, we'd also do like the scrapbooking stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, and then I made a quilt when I was 15. Nice. Because nice. I took scraps of, well... They were like scraps of fabric, but they were like pieces of fabric that were pre-cuts that they would use in like upholstery shops and stuff on their like um, cell floor that they would mm -hmm. show. And oh. I found a yard sale and I found all this fabric and mm -hmm. I got it from them. And they were just like these little squares. So I sewed them together by hand and I used like embroidery floss thread but um like the D dcm or whatever or D yeah. dmc or whatever and i would use like the whole strand so i wouldn't separate the strands i would use like the thick strand and i would put that with the needle and i would sew through the fabric you know because i didn't know any better yeah that's something too i forgot i learned that when i was young too embroidery i probably learned that more about eight or nine my mother uh, taught me that one embroidery. But yeah, um, all lots of different things. Yeah. And Beth says know? macaroni art. Yeah. Well, I even remember like when oh, I was crayons. 16, 17, I would go out and, um, well, it was probably more like 13, 14, you know. My mom um, had asked my dad to change the brakes on the car. And he just didn't get around to it and it needed to be done. So I went out there with my mom and I helped her change the brakes. There you go. Good for you. <laughs> I like that. Now that's an art and a craft that we all should know how to do actually. <laughs> oh, changing the brakes on a vehicle? Yep. In, 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 our, in, in the oil, changing an oil on the car. Too many kids don't know how to do that nowadays yeah well i taught my 20 year old so um good. i told her how to i showed her how to change her own oil yeah good i like to hear that kind of stuff my dad was a mechanic so it was like i wasn't getting away with not knowing stuff <laughs> i had to know certain stuff oh, because you take buy. it to a shop and they're gonna charge you over a hundred dollars just to change your oil yeah and you're like, I could do it for less than that. Granted, the oil is more expensive now, but still. I have to go run in the kitchen. Change the oil. And oh, you, you guys start your asparagus. You don't you? Give me a few minutes. Yeah, I got to go <laughs> through my asparagus. In. <laughs> I'll be right back. But yeah, just, you know, many different things. Yep. It's just, it, it's smart. And what if you don't have someone you could take the car to? Like during when everybody, you know, during the whole pandemic, you know, there was a lot of shops that couldn't get you in for a month and a half, two months. And it's yeah. something that you could have just, if you knew how to do it, you could have just did it, your, you, you know, do it yourself. Yeah. So. Well, there was less driving around during that too. So at least there was for me. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't have to go anywhere today. Awesome. I can, <laughs> right. home. I can just stay home. I don't even need to put clothes on. No. Well, I get <laughs> dressed that's every me. day. That's me. <laughs> that's like, me. Mm -hmm. you know, most of the time I, I get dressed. I put my shoes on. I get dressed. I'm ready for the day. 
Now, Wednesday, when I was, like, really not feeling good, I got dressed for a couple of minutes, put clothes on, and then I'm, like, and I came down here, and I was, like, going to try to work on my jacket. And then I'm, like, you know what? I can't focus on this. So I went back upstairs and changed back into my pajamas and crawled back mm -hmm. into bed and went back to sleep. Good for you. You were not feeling well. Your body probably needed it. Yeah. But all my kids were home, too, so I didn't have to go anywhere. Uh, yeah. But then I sent them all back to school on Thursday, so. <laughs> and then Friday, I woke up and my throat hurt and my sinuses were all full again. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> It was rough, but I'm doing okay. So how many beads have you made so far? I'm doing, I'm around. doing pretty good. Nine, I'm on my 10th one. Ah, that's pretty good. I have one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, yeah. And I came on probably about an hour into your show, I think. Was it about that time? I don't know. I don't... Oh, uh, Beth wants to see your your beads. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, pretty. I like the paper you've chosen. Pretty. Oh, look at the bird right there. Perfect. How it. Yeah, I kind of made it so that. Yeah. The bird was right there up front. Love it. Got some little owls. Can't really tell they're owls, but they were. I see eyes. Lots of eyes. <laughs> Very nice. They're all different sizes. I don't this think is your, your very first time, sizes. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is, like, in the kit that I bought, like, I got from a thrift store. And it's, like, in one of these, like, containers. It reminds me of the Crystal Light um, oh, yeah. containers. Yeah. It had a bunch of toothpicks in here. And it had a bunch of beads that were already made. Oh, Okay. Yeah. And I didn't like buy these. Um, There's my knitting on needle. Purpose. These were just bought because I was buying something else that was in the bag with this. Oh, so you didn't so even I realize was, that's what you were getting? Yeah, I was. I was <laughs> buying the bag for something else. Ah. And these just happened to be in there. Oh, cool. I was like, oh, paper beads. All right. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Am I ever going to make those? You know, but I just kind of held on to it. I'm like, well, I guess I was going to make them. And then it, <laughs> it, it, it turned into a conversation the other day. And here we all are making paper beads. Yeah. Well, we're making paper beads. Joni's out making asparagus. <laughs> asparagus is good, though. Oh, I love asparagus. I used I to like not it. like it, but then my mom um, made it one day. And it's like, just try it. And the way she made it, I was like, oh, this is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, my, uh, I didn't like it. And, and then my grandpa started, uh, he, he, he grew some. It grows really well where, uh, where my grandpa lives. And uh, grows wild, really. And uh, I, we, he, I was, it was my grandpaps. I had to, you know, I had to try Pappy's asparagus. And my, it was the way my grandma made it. Like you said, you didn't like it until your mom. Well, my grandma made it. And I was like, this is really good. Well, my grandma baked, she, she fried it in bacon grease. And, and it was so yummy. But she also, I heard uh, Pam, uh, Joni was talking about uh, Brussels sprouts. 
And my grandma does Brussels sprouts the same way with bacon grease. So maybe it's just, you know, the bacon grease that I really like about these two, two vegetables, but I do like them both the way my grandma makes it. This turned out as a perfect bead. Look at this one. I'm, I'm not like smacking myself and giving myself a high five, but really I am because this turned out perfect. Let me see if it will. Oh, I don't know if it's going to. Bye, Sophia. Yeah. Bye, Sophia. Look Have at how it night. rolled. It rolled like perfect. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. And it, it's this paper. It's just, but really happy with i should have i should have wrote down the size i just i just cut <laughs> i didn't even measure the i didn't even measure i just cut it and um oh now i just ruined it by rolling it that's okay i'm just happy how it rolled it rolled like a per i do be i do them though with really big holes like i i see that you're using a toothpick and i think joni's using something real tiny too yeah she's using a gooer stick yeah, see, and I'm using I'm using this uh, knitting needle because I don't use it for anything else. My knitting needles, I use them for my. But it's probably not a really thick one, though, is it? Isn't uh, it a thinner I have, one? I have three sizes, and but I have um, a really thick one here. Yeah, <laughs> well, that I'm not that thick, but it's it's pretty thick. This one here, and then oh, I yeah. I have these three sizes, and. I don't like working with the small one. I, I like the beads when they come off this bigger one. So let yeah. me try this. Let me try one or two on the smaller one. Beth, I'm gonna be tired on your show. Oh the Beth and Oh, are you Beth. streaming tonight? Uh yeah, Beth streams Beth streams Saturday nights and I, I jump I on know. with her. I'll, I'll jump on and you know, do a little dance, do a little dance, <laughs> make a little love, get down tonight. Mm -mm. There, I, I got, I sang on Joni's channel now. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> <laughs> do you have uh, plans for your dinner tonight, Pam? How many kids do you have at home? Three? Um, or, well, your daughter I have just went four at home. home. Yeah, I have four at home. She's camping, right? Is that what I heard her say? She was yeah, camping? she's camping. How fun! But she doesn't live here. She was just dropping off her oh. car and her dog. Oh, okay. Because they're going in her friend's van. Oh, okay. Van camping. Well, they're um, taking a tent. She borrowed yeah. my tent to take up there. Where Where are they going? I have no idea. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> you just I told her, I'm like, well, I'm sure your dog would enjoy going camping with yeah. you. She's like, yeah, but I don't think I could handle it. I'm like, really? I was just going to say, she just doesn't want to date to deal with the dog. She wants to she have fun with her mom. Yeah. She <laughs> likes the idea of having a dog. It's the point of taking care the of the response. Thank dog. goodness it's a dog and not a child though, right? <laughs> yes. Well, so. she has cats too. Yeah. But at least she can leave the but cats at home. I was just going to say, they're more independent. They, yeah, they, they sometimes could care less if you're there. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, the whole, the I, heck, I remember being a kid and the same thing with the dog. I did the same thing. I'm not going to lie. I remember, you know, I can't remember what I was doing, but, you know, getting mom and mom to watch my dog while I was, you know, so I'm guilty. I'm guilty. <laughs> But I didn't have any kids until I was older. So I wasn't, I, I realized I wasn't responsible enough. I wasn't responsible enough until I was 31. <laughs> yeah, I think I didn't have my first till I was 22. Ch a child or pet? <laughs> um, child. Child. I had. Now I was I a nanny. A so, here and there. What? I was a nanny. But, um, and I was a live-in nanny for, for a family too. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I still got to go home, you know, I still got to give the kid back. So it's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> not the same. It wasn't like your 24 yes. seven responsibility. Right. Yeah. Even because the p people that I, the nanny, the position where I was a live-in, the reason she made a live-in is because she worked nights. So really I just yeah. had to feed them dinner get them ready for bed. 
bath ready for bed, you know. So there was somebody work. there just in case. That's yeah. Which it was a pretty nice job because then I had the days to do to myself, you know, with myself. It just, uh, you know, because she gave me room and board, the pay wasn't that great. So, yeah. And I needed to be able and I wasn't going to work all day, even though I slept at night. You know, I was young. I was like, well, I'm not going to have two jobs. That's just silly. You know, I was single, young. I think I was. 20. I might have been 20 when I had that job. No, let me think. I think it was maybe 22. It was right before I think I moved here to Texas. I think I was the live in because I was a nanny for a family. Um, and the only reason I wasn't, an, I, I stopped working for them is they had a second child and they couldn't afford to pay me for two children anymore. Oh. What I wanted paid. They were willing, they offered. And I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> if I'm going to have both kids here, this is what it's going to be because it, now if one kid was going off to school, but she wasn't, I had a whole year before she was heading off to school. So, um, I wanted double the pay. I thought that was quite fair, you know, and, uh, they couldn't, you know, it just wasn't in their budget. And I understood there, they were kind of family friends too. So it wasn't like it was, but, um, that was why I left that job. And then I found the, the live in and I did that, uh, for about, five, six months. And then I found out the mom wasn't working all those nights. Oh, uh, she, yeah. She was going out on some of the nights, you know, partying and having a good old time on, on nights that I thought she had to work <laughs> and stuff. So I was like, well, that just isn't right. <laughs> I'm not right. She's like, I got to have my alone time too. Well, yeah, she expected, like, I, I think uh, it wasn't very clear because we didn't, I was young and I didn't do like any contract or anything like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was just an agreement and, and it was fine until, you know, I realized, you know, she expected me there every night, even if it was, you know, like she was trying to live like she, she, I was like this, she was this experience rich lady that just, you know, the, the nanny is here and she'll just always, you know, she'll take care of the kids. You know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was like, I, that, that's, this isn't right. You could be home with your kids. I could have a night off. You know, it was like seven days a week. She expected me to always be available. So I, I said, I just, um, you know, approached her nicely. I didn't even tell her that was the reason I just said, I'm, I'm going to have to go this isn't yeah. uh, working out. So, and then I moved to Texas and I've pretty much been to t in here, down here ever since. And I then, and instead of, you know, trying to work, I did work for one uh, clothing. She was a, uh, it was a woman's woman owned uh, clothing uh, designer. I worked for down here, but it was temp. I was filling in as a secretary uh, administrative assistant, uh, for, yeah. a, for the secretary of the, of the, of the, of the designer and, because her secretary was out, um, on maternity leave. So when she came back, um, she, uh, she took her job, you know, she came back to work and, and I was always hoping that I'd go work for them. And, but then, you know, life, you, you, you get sidetracked. So I ended up uh, working uh, I, I, th and I got that through a temp agency and then the temp agency placed me at this other job. And like I said, life just got in the way. It was a, an association, a lawyer's association. And I started working for them and bam, boom, bam. I was, I was the, with them for years um, and I really liked it, but that's how, you know, I fell out of not sewing anymore and not designing anymore and all that stuff. Yummy. Joni, you left us the yummy. <laughs> I guess maybe the, I guess the. No, um, I'm back now. I was just reading the chat. <laughs> mm, I thought maybe the asparagus was so good that you weren't, that you were like, uh, see you guys later. Oh, no, I was commenting on the wilted lettuce with onions and bacon oh, grease. Yeah. Oh, my mom made milk. Oh, that sounds good. I've never had wilted lettuce. How do you do that? Beth, you'll have to tell me tonight. Put it in baking oh. grease in a pan. That you just fry it, let it kind of. No, yeah, I've had yeah. I've had something like that with uh, cabbage. Yeah, it'd be the same thing. It'd be the same I'd thing. I'd say. Mm. 
I mean, unless there's a different way to do it, Beth may go, no, that's not it, Joni. And I'll be like, well, that's fair. I don't know. Then. But, uh, I'm not a, I don't cook or, uh, you know. It's warm. Just, yeah. yeah. Warm, warm lettuce. I don't, that doesn't sound good. It's good, huh? Well, I don't know. Okay. Interesting. Oh, let's see what's going on. I think here. that's how they wilt it. Yeah, I think that's how it's done. I've never made it. I've only had it. Um, what do we keep in too long, Janet? She says you okay. keep it too long. Oh, you just keep it too long. <laughs> so it is just old lettuce. Is that what you're... Were you I trying don't know. To I don't know if it's lettuce. Or if she's serious. talking about the lettuce. Look. <laughs> see, these are the times I say stupid things that I go, okay, I'm going to have to delete this now when I'm done because I said something stupid. Oh, okay, so that's no. mom drizzled. <laughs> that's what makes it. <laughs> That's what makes the, the going back and watching them funny is just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Everything <laughs> with onions. Yeah, that's it. Drizzle the hot grease on it. That I put baking grease on my asparagus. They're rolled in baking mm. grease. That's what I was just saying. How my yeah, I don't know. Did you hear me tell him? That's how my pappy. He grew asparagus and that's how my gram makes it. And uh, you were talking Brussels sprouts earlier too. And that's how my grandma does her Brussels sprouts. Yeah, that's delicious. <laughs> yum, yum. Okay, I think that's kind of cute. Yeah, you cook it long enough, the asparagus long enough, so it's um, still a little bit crunchy, but it's not. Yes. Like yeah, boring. you don't want it like real soft or whatever. And my mom always told me, you break off the ends, you don't cut them, you just take them and you snap them. Yeah. Yeah, my grandma, not my mom. My mom's not there. She's probably about as good of a cook as me. Oops. If I can get out of cooking stuff, I try. I but like cooking. Very often. <laughs> I like cooking. But... I can't stand up for long periods of time. So I also end up burning things or mm. so I'll end up getting sidetracked doing something and then I'll forget. <laughs> <laughs> forget what you were cooking or I don't know. I will. You know what? The best I like, I cook a lot of things that the way you know that they're done is because you can smell them. Like that's the, oh, oh yeah. I smell it. I got to go check it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like spaghetti sauce or bacon. Those are all things that Stuff you smell. I can just throw in a pot and it just is there. Slow cooker. Slow cooker is good. Yes. <laughs> just throw it in. My 10-year-old wants lasagna. One pot mm -hmm. somethings. <laughs> Soup. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay. I was right then. Good. Okay. I won't have to delete the stream now, Beth. <laughs> 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 I was going to see about putting the little antenna. Okay, I'm going to be right back. Okay. Right. Oh, that's cute. I'm going to go check. I heard him come in. I'm going to go check to see if they've come in. And if they have, I'm going to go turn the oven on. Okay, I'm here. I'll be here. All right. I'll behave myself, I promise. Beth taught me okay, how to behave. Okay, don't. <laughs> Well-behaved women rarely made history or that, never made history. Is that how it goes? That's right, yep. <laughs> that's what I always say. Why well, be nice when you can be naughty? <laughs> okay. Hear that, Beth? Hear that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I think that's going to be cute. I don't know how what I'm going to do with it after, but I'm I'm getting a thought. Mm -hmm. I'm brainstorming. I'm brainstorming. Yeah, B uh, Pam's beads are coming out really nice when she comes back. I'm going to have to zoom in on her. Oh yeah, she showed. Yeah, that be she showed them when you were gone. But yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, cute. 
I think they're very she's interesting. Doing like really, she's like rolling like a master too. She, I think she has like 14 done already. <laughs> no, look at that. Uh, Rebecca, I'm in charge. My husband cooked. He used to say, I can burn water. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my yeah my grandma tells my mother she can't cook. Oh, <laughs> and it's funny. It's like well that she learned from you. She's the oldest of the of the nine kids, so you know, right? That, you know, you'd think that she learned. You know, but I guess not. She doesn't have the cooking. I have a magnet that my ex husband had gotten me. I still have it because it is me. So. And it says dinner will be ready when the smoke alarm goes off. <laughs> yeah, so that's but why I don't. My college is notorious for. Well, in college, though, come on, that was a very small apartment, okay? <laughs> and I, in my defense, <laughs> I mean, if you lit a match, the thing would go off. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can boil. I I have burnt boiling water. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, you forget about it and you left it on the stove. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It ha it happens, Janet. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you bake? Are you a baker? See, I would like to bake, but Shannon doesn't like like sweets. I'd have to give them all away or eat them all myself. Oh man. I wish I lived closer. Yeah, I could give them to you. You're like, you could totally give them to me. <laughs> Plus, my 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 men are wanting dessert every night. I have to think oh, of really? Something. Wow. Well, some, they want something sweet. You know how um, men are. They just need something sweet <laughs> after that. And that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, my grandma, yeah, my grandma always served something sweet. She always had a cake or a pie. You know. Mm -hmm. So I do that. Do you like, what is your favorite thing to, <laughs> when the pot is on fire? <laughs> um, I love pies. I love pies. And I like like even meal pies, like chicken pot pie or shepherd mm. pie, anything a pie, anything in a crust. That's delicious. I'm 100% like opposite. Pie. I don't care for, I don't care for crust. It has yes, to see, be. People are either pie people or not pie people. <laughs> yeah. I found. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think. Okay. It's Pam's back. Crust. I'll be right back. I'll type be right back. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm back. Welcome back. I went and turned on the oven so that I can cook food for the kids. <laughs> I'm going to feed the kids, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, gonna take an like 80 minutes to cook the dinner oh my what do you what did you say you're cooking did you say lasagna oh oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh, it, it, it's like already prepped it's just a stouffer's lasagna oh, so yeah. i can just throw it in the oven and cook it yeah that's nice because my 10 year old said he wanted lasagna for dinner And I was looking at the time. I'm like, oh, it's 3.30. I should probably put, <laughs> turn on the oven. It's about that time. <laughs> yeah, those stofers take a long time to cook, but you don't have to do the prep. The prep of a lasagna seems to take so long. Yeah, During, it does. You know, um, uh, because I, we like lasagna, but it's the prep of it all, you know, getting everything together, especially, you know, I do more than just, I usually use veggies and things like that in it too. It's not just the, you know, cheese. I, I like putting like mushrooms and things in it. As I don't I didn't. care for mushrooms. I'm a, I love mushrooms. I'd eat mushrooms on everything. I like them. Really? I, I, I like them even not. Yeah. I love mushrooms. And, and that that's another one of those things. I think people either love mushrooms or like they're like, oh, no. Like my sister. My sister is a no mushroom. No mushrooms. She doesn't even want them on, on around, near. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does your little ones help you cook? Do they like to help you at all or? Sometimes. Sometimes. 
I just loved your little girl. She was so upset about the toilet paper and it just made oh, me I know. because because I, like, I hear nobody that. Nobody came. I kept yelling and <laughs> nobody listened. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> and we've all been there, right? We've all had that yeah. happen. And it's probably not even going to be the last time it will happen, right? <laughs> no. But how sweet she was. <laughs> Well, at least she said hi. She wasn't like too upset. Yeah. She didn't stick around to get our the highs from us, though. I thought for sure she'd stick around to wait for everybody to say hi to her. Guess not. Yeah. She had other things to do. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. I'm mad. I'm still fuming. <laughs> still upset about that toilet paper issue, Mom. Yep. <laughs> and now she's upstairs eating a popsicle. Oh, there, that. Little otter pop popsicle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's like, where's the scissors? Oh, to right open here. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I got her the scissors. Now, do you live, um, I'm guessing when you were younger, uh, you lived on a farm, in the farm area. Do you still live in that type of area? Are you still no. In the, no, you, you're more urban or, yeah, urban, urban. Yeah. yeah, I live in Ogden, Utah. Oh, okay. That's the capital, isn't it? No, Salt no. Lake is. Well, then what's Salt Lake Why do we is... know Ogden? Oh, did, was this, was the Olympics in Ogden? What was in Ogden that we know Ogden then? Why would I know that? Maybe I know somebody else that lives there. Well, Joni, now you have to delete it because I just made a fool myself. Oh, no. What did you do? <laughs> thinking I think Ogden was the capital of Utah. They're skiing there. I think someone's going there yeah, to get it's, married. It's skiing, like Park City and... Um, yeah, I think that's what it is. I and then I there's some there. other places too, but I can't think of it. I know where it's at. It's up by Pineview Reservoir, but I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Um, Snow Basin. Mm. That's um, closer to like... Um, well, I know Park City, we used to have um, at the I, that Lawyers Association I mentioned that I worked at, we used to have um conferences there i didn't get to oh, go, okay we used to have conferences at, in park city at a conference center i don't yeah so mm. yeah you'd Good probably time. be surprised by how much it's developed now so many houses Oh, man. There we go. Do, yeah, Salt, do Lake, you, uh. Salt Lake is like 45 minutes away from me. So that's not too bad. I can get to the airport in 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, that's not bad at all. Mm hmm. That's about how, well, no, it takes us now with how much Austin has grown so much. It takes us more about an hour to get to the airport, but it, it used to be, you could get there much faster, but uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I live, um, I mean, I have neighbors, but it's considered we're out, you know, rural, 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 rural yeah, out in the country, <laughs> out in the country, there's horses and, uh, you know, all that right here around, uh, uh, ranches, you know, Texas ranches. We got a couple ranches around and lots of cows, sheep. Got or Shannon uh, had to save a goat one time. It was a baby goat was walking on the wrong side of the fence. The mama goat was on the one side. 
it was on the other side. <laughs> so she had to grab it and throw it, get it back on the fence. <laughs> but I did yeah, my. We used to I have my a Billy goat when I was little. Oh. <laughs> I did my. Yeah, I showed it who was in charge. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. I take out a baseball bat. Oh no! I was little, <laughs> only because it was to. I didn't. I don't think I really hit it, but <laughs> it was just in case it came after me. I'd swing yeah. the bat. Which they, I, yeah, Billy goats are known to 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 be kind of rough. That's why they're Billy. Right? Yeah. They're not those cute little goats that you go do yoga, yoga with. Totally different kind oh, of goat. Pig goat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you don't want to, you don't want a billy goat climbing on your back. <laughs> no, you do not. Mm -mm. And Joni, I don't, I don't recall where you're, where, what part of the world are you in? Um, I'm on the Alabama Georgia line. Oh, I didn't know that at all. Well, uh, there we go. That's the kind of the area we're, well, um, we're looking Georgia. Well, really Tennessee. We'd like to move over to Tennessee. We want to be closer to Pennsylvania because that's where both of our families are. So, right. I heard you, were you saying you go to Gatlinburg? I used to live in Chattanooga. N no, right. never have been, never have been there, but that's the area that we're looking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Just because of the weather and the, uh, we want the, you know, we grew up in the Appalachian Mountains in Pennsylvania. Both of us know that area, you know, the Appalachians. So we'd like the trees and a little bit better weather, a little bit cooler than here. I don't know if I'm going to be real happy with the, the humidity, but. No, nah, the humidity stinks. Yeah. But, yeah. But I've, I actually have found a couple houses in Georgia. Uh, Shanna had lived in Georgia before, and she says it's pretty decent. So it's been a consideration, but um, yeah, with the with the with the with the with the the rate right now, there ain't there's no moving gonna happen. <laughs> Six point nine, I think I seen it today. I was like, yeah, look at house looking is, is not gonna happen right now. <laughs> That's just crazy. right. Yeah, prices are ridiculous. I mean. I know I could sell this place. Um, the the demand around here is still pretty good, but we have a lot of people coming in with cash, and so they're buy they don't need to worry about the interest rates. They're selling their California homes and coming here and being able to you know buy cash. Right. Oh, now that one might work. Oops. That one's kind of crazy. like in my neighborhood. What would have been a like a hundred thousand a couple years ago. Uh huh. Well, I guess I bought my house back in 2005. Well, no, yeah. 2006 is when I bought my house. But now, um, a house like this goes like upwards of 300,000. And that to me is uh, the, 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 it's ridiculous. The, uh, I, my house, we've been in it since 2017, I think. And um, my uh, realtor sends us a thing on what if, if she was to list our house, what she would list it at. She sends it to us. I think it's bi-monthly. It might be monthly, but I think it's bi-monthly. And um, she's, we've, it's all, it, we've already, it's already, it would list at 100000 more than what we bought it for. Yeah. Right. In just that little bit of time. And but then like, everything, everybody else's house is also listing, you know, so you're going right. into a market where everyone else. Yeah, that's right. A, that's why we want to, that's, that's why we want to get out of here and move to, you know, and, and I, the houses that we're looking at, we're looking at the range that what we bought this house for and we're getting acreage. You know, we want more, five, more, five or more acreage because I would like to get a couple miniature horses and I'd like a little mini farm. And, right. Uh, Damn it! I just tore this. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a little. I want a little homestead. Um, something I can handle, you know, my wheelchair or, or on a four wheel or something, you know, something like that. But I, uh, it's just you, you, the, the, the interest rates just too high. <laughs> you know, right? We have to get such a, you know, we'd have to get what they're asking. Well, people, it's changed unfortunately in the last couple months because of interest rates. But here in this area, people were paying. 
upwards of 50, 60,000 above asking price for homes. It was crazy, right. crazy around here. Um, but it definitely has slowed down. We have a friend that has, has their house listed and it's um, people, they had someone come out yesterday and it was an older couple, he said. And he said, they kept telling them, no, no, we have to live in, you know, this town, this town, this town. And they're like, you know, they didn't ask too many questions. And the only thing that they could think of the way that they were talking, because she said, they're both, you could tell they're both retired. They want to bring their horses. They have their horses. They're paying $1,500 a month to, uh, to stall their horses over in California. So they need land for their horses and it has to be in this area. So the only thing she said I could think of is it has to be they're moving here for their grandkids or their, or their kids. You know, their kids probably moved here with their grandkids and they want to be close to them. So they need to stay in this area. You know, they don't want to live 40, 50 miles away from their kids, you know. Right. I mean, and right. I mean, of course, we're assuming this, but it sure does. That sure does, that's a pretty good, I think, assumption. Kind of because, yeah. You know, why would older people need to live in this area? You know, usually when you're retired, you were a little bit more giving of where what area you could live in or move into or whatever. Right. Well, yeah, it could just be that or, you know, knows. Oh, a lot of old yeah. people go as consultants and retire and then become a consultant or something. Yeah. Well, yeah. Who knows? But that wouldn't be in this area. I mean, oh, we're, okay. we're country folk, you know, well, it's right. changing. we're changing and, but yeah. Well, there's my beads, ladies. Oh my gosh. They're gorgeous. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. Well, don't Thank move. you. Not a, they're better Good than much. yesterday. Oh, there we go. They're better than yesterday. So those are really good. Look how tiny and cute they are. My goodness. This one turned out really small. <laughs> yes, it did. But oh, this is going to be fun. Now I, I see a lot of happy mail with paper beads. <laughs> <laughs> Because now we're all going to be making paper. Yeah, paper. you're right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, everybody's doing that. Yeah. And the, the, now I will, you know, cover them all. I'll do a couple layers of glue on them. That's how I like to, you know, finish them up to make them, to make them shiny like these. Right. Well, I'm turning mine into like a little um, hanger. So I'm going to have oh, the little yeah, seeds. Yeah. So let me see if I can show you what I'm thinking here. Don't look at my mess down there. So no, thank you. Girl, that's nothing. <laughs> so I can do like a little thing here so it can hang. Uh -huh. And then I've got this one and I'm going to have it coming down and I'm going to separate it with the little beads. Oh, great idea. Great idea. To there. Yeah. Little 3D butterflies. I'll have to, or it might, you know, I might have to do it like that and have them come off the bottom. I don't know, like a kite or something. I think that's cute anyway. It's a great so idea. You can get it on a little dowel. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to sco scoot off because Beth, I'm going to get on with Beth here in about 15, 20 minutes. So I'm going to go. Yes, and sounds fabulous. Thanks, Janet. <laughs> yes, Thanks. we'll see you over there. I'm going to eat. So I'll be listening. Well, well I right. thank you for yeah, letting, in, in, inviting me. Or I don't know if I got invited or if I just bombarded and came in. But No, this was open. It was open all along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thank you. And it was nice meeting you all, like, talking. It's nice to, have you know, meet someone actually talking. Yeah, fun. Yes, we'll oh. do this more often. Okay. You guys are awesome. Thank you, everybody. And Pam, your beads came out quite nice. Thank you. <laughs> what are you going to do with yours, Pam? I'm not 100% sure, <laughs> but I do have like, I like this little. Oh, wow. Look at that. Thank you. Here. Look at that her drawing. Her, her, her mock up is that that would be better cute. than my finished products. It's beautiful. <laughs> Well, this is just like something that was in the kit. Oh, you didn't draw that. This. No, I did not draw Oh, that. okay. I thought you drew that. I was like, your mock-up is better than that. Okay. That's right. kind of where the idea came from. I like the idea of that little hangy thing. I thought it was kind of like a little mobile. And yeah. that was one of my first, one of my first loves was making those dioramas and mobiles for elementary school, man. Oh, fun. Yeah. Remember those? That was like, I yep. could really be creative with those at such a young age.
So I remember yep. those being like, heck yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Pam. Thanks, Becca. Bye, Bye, Pam. Great fun. Bye. See you later.